Hello and welcome back. So, I received my uh, AU8800 soldering iron and it came with this filter pre-installed right there. They call this a ceramic filter. Well, I'll be damned if this ceramic filter doesn't have a lot in common. Especially when they come like this or in this little bag here multiples and you add a little bit of water and it suddenly expands and looks exactly like the sponge and if you recall the sponges come flat and you add a little water and they expand too ceramic i have my doubts so is it a filter? Yeah, it may work as a filter. Is it a ceramic filter? No. Now we all know that the AU8800 is a copy of design with slight changes to it of the Heiko 880 discontinued model. Uh, so what I'm thinking actually, what I'm thinking a lot actually, but what I'm thinking is there's confusion. The manual says to install a filter in this black cap here but yet mine came with a filter installed in the gun the filter in the gun is not ceramic but i do know that if hot solder gets into any of these diaphragms or any of these valves back in the back of this gun this gun's toast it's done now what is ceramic is this I use this for wrapping hot ends on 3D printers. This is a full roll of ceramic. Not expensive, but not cheap either. But let's say we take a little piece like this and we use a dime. And we simply cut our own filters out. It's kind of where I was going with this. So I'm wondering what it would do if we made our own filters. So the only thing that I'm worried about here of making the own filters is your air pressure, of course, because you don't want to hinder the actual vacuum pressure or try to overwork the motor and have the motor die out on you. Let's see, did I cut that good enough? Yep. But I do know that a little section I gotta rip off here. There we go. I do know that if you take one of these filters here that come with it, that they claim are ceramic, I'll take a brand new one, never used, never opened. And you place that filter in the back of this piece like they want you to. This is what it shows in the manual. It just simply falls out. Well that's no good. Maybe that's why they actually sent it to me with one installed in the gun. And the one installed in the gun was expanded like as if somebody put some water on it. Okay. Still not a ceramic filter. It's a sponge with a little bit of water. But now you're going to get water sucked back into the diaphragms and the valves. And there's no ventilation to prevent that moisture from going in there from molding up. And molding up is just going to eventually deteriorate and affect the function of the actual valves. So you're going to have to take the, the diaphragm off and you're going to have to take the valves off and clean it with rubbing alcohol and everything. But this little dime shape, uh, real ceramic filter fits really nice really tight and really well in this piece here as a matter of fact it fits even better in here does a really nice job in there that will definitely seal anything and catch anything from coming out. So the question is, where do we put this real ceramic filter? 
So we put it in here as backup protection and put an expanded sponge in the canister, like so. Or do we use a real ceramic filter in here too? Or is this too much air pressure at this point? No? I think it might be okay. I'm actually leaning towards, as fun as this little grease setup cleanup thing is, the real Heka does not have a metal spring that hot solder is going to fling onto that you constantly have to grease down to clean up, which with my first spring, apparently I didn't add enough grease to it because it, uh, well, let's, let's just say, uh, I had to use the desoldering gun to actually get the solder out of the iron spring. So it's a good thing they sent me a couple of parts. So I'm leaning towards a different setup altogether. This is my backstop. This is my backup filter. This is simply a canister. That's all it is. Solder shouldn't stick to ceramic. Even flung at high temperatures while melted. Shouldn't be in the keyword. There's no way to really test this without turning it on. So I guess I'm going to have to turn it on. Still sounds like it has some vacuum to it. Now what we're going to find out though is to actually test it and actually desolder a couple of joints because it has to be enough vacuum to actually pull solder off of a board. I've been working on this board here actually. There's still a few more parts I wanted, but they did some botched job soldering here, so I had to use my uh, hot air to actually try to get rid of a lot of this solder here. Um, there's one capacitor. These are really big joints on the capacitor. This would be a good test, actually, because they're big joints. Let's see if I'm hot enough to melt yet. Not quite yet. Oh, we're getting there. Well, at least we're getting there for new solder. It went in and bounced off the ceramic. Boy, wouldn't that be so much easier to clean? No grease. Let's try that. It did, it bounced right off the ceramic. Still has enough vacuum. At least it appears to. Oh yeah. Took that joint right away. See this is a big capacitor so I may have to play a little wiggle with it. Unlike most of them that just kind of fall out. Oh, that and they use this freaking glue all over this thing. This white stuff. But, alright, where's my capacitor container? There it is. But all in all, let's find some other big joints here. This is a, uh, a wire, I think. This has a lot of solder. Was it a wire? Yeah, it was. Okay. That's a bucket piece. I'm just testing right now. Let's see. What do we got here? Another wire? This wire might be too big to actually melt.
we have melting solder. Oh, it was two wires right next to each other. No wonder. That was a pain in the ass. I know why that one didn't come out easy. Or at least melt easy. All right, so we need to keep going here. We definitely have solder back. Now remember, I still have a second filter in here. I'm running a double filter right now. Real ceramic double filter. So this one's catching all the solder, no doubt about that. There's still protection behind it, just in case it breaks through the ceramic, because this is kind of a, kind of trying to enhance, or enhance, yeah, enhances, basically take a, um, AU's design and make it better. That is the right word. Let's take a closer look here and see what we got. We can leave the gun on. We have nothing on this side. We have nothing here. We have a single gasket that you would pull out with a block of solder on it. And since it's ceramic, it will come up with a single coat. And it still seems to have plenty of pressure left. I can even scrape that little bit off. And this is st st still way thick enough to keep running. I think I'm gonna run it like this because, I mean, after that, what do you have? A bunch of solder in here. Not anymore. I would still put the grease on the inside of the canister to give the canister a little bit of a easy cleanup. I could just figure out a way to do a, a cross metal brace in there. I think the ceramic back here could be relied on by itself. And we wouldn't have to use this spring, which seems to be fairly high maintenance. This seems to be really simple. I see that this as being a really, really simple solution. So I'm going to keep running it, and I'll let you know how it works.